Hey tubers, what's up again? This is part two of my homebrew off-road upgrade series. Today we're going to be talking about my brush guard. Well, basically, brush guard, as its name implies, is a brush guard. It protects your vehicle from brush while off-roading. And it also can, you know, give you some more beefier look. Like, when I put mine on, I noticed that people stop pulling out in front of me on the road. You know how you have some idiots that, you know, you'll, they'll floor it and pull off from an intersection in front of you while, from a stop sign while you while you don't have to go through a stop sign, say, say, I'm running north, and there's an intersection up here. I get to about here, the intersection's here, and there's a car right here that pulls out in front of me. Well, if you have a beefy enough looking front end brush guard bumper set up, like mine does, it's... It's solid. Yeah, it wiggles a little bit, but it's solid. It ain't going nowhere. Of course, I ain't hit no one with it yet, which I really don't want to, but if I did, the brush guard would take all the abuse. But that can also be a bad thing, because this is a unibody vehicle. My Jeep has a unibody. Well, what the unibody does is basically when you get in a crash, Instead of having a rigid frame like most older cars and like heavy duty pickup trucks nowadays have, that frame takes all the force and your vehicle will stop quicker, but your body will keep going the same speed your vehicle was, which can result in uh, more injury to yourself. But the unibody, basically the whole body and frame of the vehicle is integrated or the body basically is the frame. So that's also the bad thing about older unibody vehicles when they start rusting out. Like as you can see, mine is. Uh, but you can do things to strengthen up your unibody, like uh, adding rock slider rails, or I've even heard of people uh, cutting out some of the channels and welding in like thicker tube steel and other things. But today we're going to talk about brush guards. Well, mine was a chunk of square tubing, which I don't know the measurements, but I could probably get a tape measure and measure it, but we're just going through the quick rundown. And then some flat bar stock. I think it could be spring steel. I don't know. I just grabbed it from the metal pile for this piece and this piece. Then the top piece is just a chunk of angle iron. And just all this is welded together. And basically, I'd, if you look closely again, you can see it's this side of the brush guard sticks out further from the fender than this side, you know, kind of opposite my bumper. But I say it creates an optical illusion so you can't even tell. But anyway, I welded it all up. My welds aren't the best, but I also couldn't get in there very good with the grinder in them angles because the grinder was too long, but on the outside, you know, see they're nice and smooth. And it's pretty sturdy. And then what I did, instead of welding it on, you know, because I was being kind of lazy, I just took two grade 5 bolts. If you can, I would say use grade 8 bolts, because they're a lot stronger. Um, they're a lot harder, and they can take a lot more, uh, it takes a lot harder, more strength to break them. But I just ran to the bolt bin at work, and this is all we have, is grade 5 bolts. So, you know, just some washers on the front and back, and I just drilled holes straight through this, and then weaseled my hand back up in there and bolted them on with the impact. And if you build one of these bumpers, too, another thing you got to watch out for is your license plate mount. I've seen people uh, mount them, like I used to have that uh, grill thing in here. But when I hit that pole last year, that broke with my light. But I've seen people wire them up in front of here. That's kind of a bad idea, because that can restrict airflow to your radiator, which can lead to overheat... Well, it won't really overheat your vehicle, but it can run a slight bit hotter, which I didn't really want to do, so... I just took... As you can see, it, one of the screws broke, but I took two self-drilling uh, screws a self-drilling screw is basically a screw that has a little mini drill bit on the end of it. They're usually good for about one use, but I've 
cheated and reused one to drill holes for other screws that didn't have the drill bit on them. And I got about uh, four or five uses out of one screw for the little drill bit. But another thing to watch out for with the self-drilling screws is, as you can see, this one broke. And if you can look close enough, there's another one right beside it. That one broke, too. That happens when you try to use them in thicker metal. Is that they bind, and you usually have, and you have to use a drill to put them in, because you can't do it by hand. It would take forever. But my problem is I like to use the drill on the high-speed setting, and once it bites, it drills in quickly and snaps the head right off. And the way you're supposed to drill is have it on, in low setting on the drill, but... Anywho, that's the brush guard, and I'm, and next time we'll talk about the uh, light bar and how I wired that up and everything. Well, see you guys.